Now, to a very interesting turn of events. And the Attorney General Gidu Mwegai has also weighed in on the swearing-in debate, saying the Constitution must be upheld. The Attorney General says the swearing-in of any person not declared by the IEBC in the process not conducted by the Chief Justice is a process unanticipated by the Constitution and is null and void. He also touched on the People's Assembly, saying Parliament has not delegated any power and the institutions are illegal, unconstitutional, null and void, and the persons involved may be visited by the full force of the law. The Constitution is the supreme law of the Republic of Kenya, and it binds all persons and all state organs at both levels of government. It is therefore not possible in this country to have two sets of laws operating in respect of two different sets, either of individuals or of classes within our society. We have one constitution for all the people of Kenya. There have been media reports suggesting that following the swearing-in of the president and his deputy after the repeat presidential election, there is proposed to be another swearing-in of another person or persons on the 12th of December uh, uh, this year. Now, I want to start by saying, for the avoidance of any doubt, that the Constitution of Kenya provides in clear terms, in Article 2, sub-Article 2, that no person may claim or exercise state authority except as authorized under the Constitution. No person may claim or exercise state authority as ex as, except as authorized by the Constitution. A swearing in of any person, any person not lawfully declared to have won an election by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, and a swearing in that is not conducted by the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya is a process wholly unanticipated by the Constitution and is null and void and illegal. Ab I hope I have made that absolutely clear. Further, and in addition, the criminal law of the Republic of Kenya in Article 40 of the Penal Code provides or stipulates that that sort of process is high treason. It is high treason in respect of the person so involved and any other person facilitating that process. I do not wish to spend more time on that issue because it is clear. Let me come to the question of people's assemblies. Similarly, the so-called people's assemblies are institutions totally unknown to the constitution of Kenya, and totally unknown to the County Governments Act. They have purportedly been established in violation of the Constitution and the law. Parliament has not delegated any power of that nature. The County Governments have no power to create institutions of that nature. What is the consequence, therefore? Consequence is that these institutions are unconstitutional, they are illegal, they are null and void. The persons involved in their creation are involved in extra constitutional activity and may be visited by the full force of the law. <coughs> The purpose of devolution was to shift power nearer to the people. The government of Kenya continues to be committed to that process. Pending before parliament is a bill to further devolve power to 
uh, to townships, to create mayors and their deputies and other levels of managing government closer to the people. The so-called county assemblies do not feature in that legitimate scheme. Indeed, the High Court of Kenya at Kitui has already pronounced itself on this question in petition number seven of 2017. Those who continue to purport to create these institutions are doing so contrary to the express provisions of a court order. And again, I would say they are undermining the rule of law and acting in contempt of court. Further, and finally, the creation of these illegal institutions by the use of funds that have been sent to the counties to run county operations is a violation of the Public Finance Management Act. And any person involved in the use of <coughs> money legitimately voted by the National Assembly to do legitimate work in the counties and is now being used for this illegitimate purpose means that this money can be surcharged to those persons who have been involved in that process. Not to mention that the government retains the right to review <coughs> county expenditure where the counties have misappropriated. And this, there can be no other word to describe it, is a misappropriation of legitimate monies that should be serving uh, the, the one inches of those counties. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is all I wanted to say about those two questions and to affirm the commitment of the government to safeguard and protect the Constitution and the rule of law. Thank you.